fitting the fence locks. The Triton Work Center has a dual locking fence supplied with the contractor saw module that includes two fence locks for each end of the table. To fit the locks, slide the 10mm nuts on the lower part of the bracket into the lowest channel on the face of the end aluminium extrusion rail. The locks can be positioned anywhere along the rail, allowing you to alter them according to your own preference and the type of job you're working on. Secure the fence locks by tightening the two screws and repeat this for all four locks. Optional Outfeed Support To fit the optional outfeed support, begin by attaching the two chrome rails to the support using the screws provided. Next, locate the brackets in the base rail on the outfeed side of the work center. Then feed the chrome rails into the brackets. You can lock the position of the outfeed support using the black knob on each bracket. Optional side support. To fit the optional side support, start by attaching the two chrome rails to the support using the screws provided. Next, locate the brackets in the base rail on the side of the work center. Then feed the chrome rails into the brackets. You can lock the position of the outfeed support using the black knob on each bracket. To prevent the rails from being withdrawn too far, fit the supplied self-tapping screw into the end of the rail. The easiest way to do this is by lifting and removing any module from the work center. Contractor saw. To fit the contractor saw module to the work center, stand to the side of the top, then lower the module rollers into the mounting guide, which will engage the leveling bobbins. Now simply lower the module into the work center frame. The first time you fit a module to your frame, the fit can be fine-tuned by adjusting the leveling screws and bobbins. So the top of the module is precisely level with the work center surface, the surround at the ends, and the top of the T-track along the sides. Adjust each in turn, checking the fit by eye with a set square or by hand. Use whichever method that suits you to achieve an accurate result. When the module is completely level, snap the module locks closed to hold the module in place, then connect the power cable to the knee off switch. You can trim the fit of the module in the work center by adjusting the concentric black spacers on the right side of the module. Periodically check the top surface alignment and readjust as necessary, depending on usage. With the saw module level, it's important to check the level of the kerf plate. This can be adjusted by turning the six grub screws with a hex key as required and checking with a straight edge. Fitting the rip fence. To fit the saw fence to the work center, start by lifting the tabs on the fence locks to the unlock position. Next, slide the rip fence arms into the profiled runners at each end of the work center. The fence is locked into position by pushing down on the lock tabs. The fence can be fitted to either side of the blade and is reversible for use when bevel cutting. Adjusting the blade. You can adjust the angle of the blade from zero degrees for a straight vertical cut up to 45 degrees for a miter cut. To do this, loosen the locking lever and rotate the bevel angle adjuster. You can read the angle achieved in the sight window to the right of the adjustment lever. When you're at the right angle, remember to lock the adjustment. To adjust the height of the blade, simply wind the handle at the front of the saw module. The contractor's saw blade should be calibrated on occasion to ensure its home position is completely square with the table surface. 
With the saw blade raised to its maximum height, check the angle of the blade with a set square. If required, adjust the angle of the blade so that it's true to your square and lock off the angle adjustment. There are two adjustment screws that set the stop positions for the blade. One for the vertical stop at 0 degrees and the second for the stop at 45 degrees. These screws operate a simple cam so you can fine-tune the stop angle. You can then loosen the screws on the bevel angle gauge so that at true vertical the gauge reads 0 degrees. Calibrating the rip fence. If required, you can adjust the rip fence position indicator so that it reads zero with the fence in the correct position. Start by disconnecting the power, then loosen the screws holding the rip fence position indicator. Next, with the blade height set to maximum, set the side of the fence firmly against the edge of the blade. Set the indicator to zero and retighten the screw. Fitting the riving knife and blade guard. With the mains power disconnected, raise the blade on the saw. Now, while taking care with the blade edges, unlock and remove the kerf plate. Loosen the securing knob so that the sprung plates can be separated and the riving knife can be inserted. Locate the holes on the riving knife on the two pegs before retightening the securing knob and refitting the kerf plate. Dust extraction. The contractor saw has dust extraction points above and below the table. Each point will accept a 35mm hose connection, which is available with the Triton dust collection bucket, making a simple rip cut. Set the blade height so its highest point is approximately 3.2mm or 1 16th of an inch above the depth of your board. Adjust the rip fence to the correct width and lock the rip fence in position by closing the rip fence clamps. Hold the workpiece flat against the table and against the rip fence, approximately 25 millimeters or one inch short of the blade edge. Switch on the saw on the work center and allow the blade to reach full operating speed. While holding the workpiece flat to the table and against the rip fence, feed the workpiece slowly through the blade, ensuring you maintain an even pressure through the cut. When the trailing edge is less than 150 mm, use the supplied push stick to complete the cut. Switch the saw off and allow the blade to come to a complete stop before removing the workpiece or any offcut. Making a bevel cut. Adjust the blade to the required bevel angle by releasing the blade lock lever and turning the bevel angle adjuster. When the desired angle is set, lock the adjuster lever. Set the blade height so that its highest point is approximately 3.2 mm or 1 16th of an inch above the depth of your ball. Adjust the rip fence to the correct width and lock the rip fence in position by closing the rip fence clamps. Hold the workpiece flat against the table and against the rip fence, approximately 25 mm or 1 inch short of the blade edge. Switch on the saw on the work center and allow the blade to reach full operating speed. While holding the workpiece flat to the table and against the rip fence, feed the workpiece slowly through the blade, ensuring you maintain an even pressure through the cut. Making a cross cut. For safety reasons, ensure the rip fence is not able to restrict the workpiece or remove it from the work center when making a cross cut. Insert the slider of the protractor gauge into the T-track rail to support the workpiece during the cutting procedure. Adjust the protractor gauge to the desired angle for the cut and lock it into position. 
Position the saw blade so its highest point is approximately 3.2 millimeters or 1 16th of an inch higher than the top of the workpiece. Hold the workpiece firmly against the protractor gauge using the hand closest to the blade and position the other hand for support on the part of the workpiece furthest from the saw blade. Switch the contractor saw on and allow the saw blade to reach the operating speed. Using both hands to support the workpiece, slowly feed the workpiece into the saw blade. Before removing the cut-off part of the workpiece, turn the saw off and wait for the blade to stop rotating. Changing the blade To change the blade on the contractor saw module, start by disconnecting the mains power and then unlocking and remove the curve plate. Wind the table to its highest position, then remove the riving knife and blade guard. The contractor saw is supplied with two multi-tools. While taking care of the blade's sharp edges, use the first tool to hold the arbor still and use the second tool to release the blade securing nut. If you drop the blade securing nut or flange into the saw, don't panic. There's an access hole in the base of the lower guard where you can retrieve them. Occasionally a thin offcut may make it past the curve plate, which can be removed using this access hole. Remove the nut and the blade flange. The blade can now be removed. To replace the blade, simply reverse this process.